to This Day in Baseball's Daily Rewind. We explore baseball's amazing, timeless history with short, cool stories beyond the box score from 1869 to present day. And you may think, how about that? Well, holy cow. And just maybe, do you believe it? And I'm your host, Tom Hannon. Welcome, fans, and thank you for joining us on This Day in Baseball's Daily Rewind. This is Episode 7 of the podcast, In today's podcast is called The Stat That Created a Position, The Save. Today we're going to rewind to April 7th, 1969 to talk about Bill Singer in the first official save in Major League Baseball history. And before I do, I've got some trivia for you. And you guessed it, it's about saves. Who has the longest save in Major League Baseball regular season history? The answer's at the end. On April 7th, 1969, Los Angeles Dodger pitcher Bill Singer stepped onto the mound in the bottom of the sixth at Crosley Field in Cincy. The Dodgers, backed by Don Drysdale, staked him to a 3-2 lead over the Reds. The game looked shaky to start as Double D started off giving up back-to-back home runs to Pete Rose and Bobby Tolan, but he settled down quickly and didn't give up another run and the Dodgers took the lead 3-2 in the fourth. Singer was not a relief pitcher per se. He had made 322 career appearances and 308 will be starts. He, however, was afforded this opportunity. And a cool fact about Cincinnati is they had a long tradition of playing the first game of the season. It was called the Opener of Openers. And they played this game at home from 1876 until 1990. And that tradition during that time was only broken twice during rainouts in 1877 and 1966. Singer, if he could hold the lead, would save the first game in MLB history. He will face 10 batters and only one will reach base when Pete Rose walks in the eighth. The last batter, Johnny Bench, will fly out to center field to end the game and Singer will record the first save in Major League Baseball history. And as a side note, Singer didn't really become a closer as he only saved two career games. Now let's step back and see how a save came about. The term save was being used as far back as 1952 by several baseball executives. A few of note, Jim Toomey, Alan Roth, and Irv Kays. They awarded saves to pitchers who finished games but were not credited with the win, regardless of the margin of victory. And the statistic largely went un- unnoticed until 1960. After watching Elroy Face go 18-1 and in 1959, baseball writer Jerome Holtzman felt his 1958 campaign, even though he went 5-2, and two, was far better. You see, despite Face's record, the reason he won 18 games was he had actually given up the lead 10 times, and then the Pirates' offense bailed him out. So Holtzman went to work and created a formula with more criteria for saves, and he implemented this in 1960. He felt that the existing statistics at the time, ERA, wins and losses, didn't sufficiently measure a reliever's effectiveness. ERA, as we know, does not account for inherited runners a reliever allows to score, and a win-loss record really doesn't show if a reliever protected a lead or not. So Holtzman presented this idea to J.G. Taylor Spink, the publisher of the Sporting News. Spink loved the idea so much so he gave Holtzman a bonus. And then he had Holtzman track the unofficial save statistic in the Sporting News Weekly for nine years before it became an official statistic in 1969. The Sporting News also started in 1960 the Fireman of the Year Award, which was awarded based on a combination of saves and wins. And Dan Quisenberry holds the record for winning the award five times. Now a value of the save is a highly debated one. Before the mid-1980s, a relief pitcher would often come in to get six to nine outs for a save. It was a normal thing to see Goose Gossage, Raleigh Fingers, or Bruce Souter with 90 to 120 innings pitched, 30 saves, and upwards of eight plus wins. However, the modern day bullpen emerged and the role of the closer changed dramatically. 
instead of somebody that would come in to pitch two to three innings, they would start to become somebody who just pitched one inning. And the first great example of this was Dennis Eckersley. Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan were able to take the act and turn him into a dominating one inning pitcher. Now this became a trend throughout baseball over time and it's evolved into the position that it is today. And some interesting comments along the way, uh, Brad Doolittle of the Kansas City Star wrote, the closer is the only example in sports of a statistic creating a job. I thought that was interesting. And another one was from ESPN.com columnist Jim Capel. He has argued that the save statistic has turned the closer position into the most overrated position in sports. Well, I find that interesting. And I also find interesting that uh, closers tend to perform poorly in non-save situations versus a save situation. Here's my take on that. When I did my research for episode three on Dennis Eckersley, he discussed how he went up to Jeff Ridden and asked him how he dealt with being a closer. Ridden said he didn't deal with it. His nerves were a mess from the sixth inning on. And Ridden was one of the top closers of all time. And Eck felt totally validated because he was nervous the entire game. Eck was so nervous, in fact, that when he retired, he said, he said that he felt a tremendous weight lifted off of him. The stat itself may be overrated. And as we know, high leverage outs sometimes come in the seventh inning. They sometimes come in the eighth inning. It's not always the ninth inning. But the pitches who do perform this role should not be underestimated for their ability to wait eight innings on pins and needles and then to have to come in and get the final three outs of the game. It's not a job that all pitchers can do and it's shown over time that many can't. So although the stat itself may be overrated, the role that they play is not. If you're going to discuss grit in saves, there is one player you need to discuss, and that is Mariano Rivera. He is truly the game's greatest closer. Over his 19-year career, he saved 652 games, a major league record, and his stats only tell a fraction of the story. He entered games while Metallica's Enter the Sandman played. If you experienced it at Yankee Stadium, it was one of the most incredible entrances for a baseball player in the history of the game. He dominated his position, so much so, he was unanimously voted into Cooperstown this past year. Something that had never happened before in Major League Baseball history. His dominance in the postseason reads like an Atari video game. He had 96 appearances, he pitched 141 innings, and he allowed a mere 11 runs. His ERA was .7. His Yankees won the World Series title in five of the 16 years he made the playoffs. He was truly one of the most dominant players to ever play Major League Baseball. And that is how a save became a save. Now let's answer that trivia question. On September 3rd, 2002, the Texas Rangers starter, Aaron Meat, was ejected for throwing at Melvin Mora. Todd Van Poppel came in in relief and pitched the next two innings. And then Joaquin Benoit entered the game in the third inning with the Rangers up four to zip. Benoit will pitch seven innings and allow only one run to record the save. That is the longest save since it became an official stat in 1969. Now, a preposterous save was when Wes Littleton was credited with the save in the Texas Rangers' 30-3 win over the Baltimore Orioles on August 22, 2007. And, as a side note, the longest save in World Series history goes to Madison Bumgarner, who came in and pitched five scoreless innings in Game 7 of the 3-2 victory over the Kansas City Royals that gave the San Francisco Giants their third title in five years. Thanks for joining us on The Rewind. It was my pleasure to share this story with fellow baseball fans. Just a quick note, our shows are based on historical research through many sources. Our show notes and website, thisdayinbaseball.com, are worth checking out in case you missed something. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this podcast with other baseball fans who may enjoy these stories. 
My name's Tom Hannon. I'm your host, editor, researcher, and writer. I'll see you at the ballpark.